Well, good morning. We're glad to have you on the service this morning with us today. Let's stand and worship the Lord together.
may be seated. I'd like to invite the ushers forward at this time for our tithes and offerings. Let's pray. Lord, we ask you to bless these gifts that we bring. Bless our church and all the people who are worshiping with us today. In your name we pray, amen. Good morning, church family. Bon dia. We're sorry we could not be with you this morning, but we want you to know that you are in our thoughts and our prayers. We love our church family so much and are thinking of you and praying for you as you worship this morning. I do want to thank you all this, this week. I received a bunch of uh, notes from you all and they were uh, so encouraging and just a blessing to me. I just want to give you a great big thank you for that. Uh, you touched my heart and it, it's hard to believe uh, that uh, this month marks three years that Karen and I have been uh, with you. And that old saying is absolutely true. Time flies when you're having fun because we are sure having fun with you and enjoying ministering to you and with you to our community. I want to uh, remind you a few announcements. Uh, the first one is this Thursday, October 31st, from 6 to 8 p.m. is our annual Trunk or Treat, and we would love to have you participate. You can participate by donating candy, or you can dress your car up, your trunk, and um, pass out candy. So if you would like to be involved in either one of those, please see Jeannie Gomes. And then on November 2nd, uh, this coming Saturday, we will be having our soup and survey. And that'll begin at 4 p.m. here at the church. You don't have to bring anything except yourselves. We have it all set up, and it's a time when we can share a little bit more with you about, uh, about the vision of the church and, and what the team's been doing and uh, share together over, um, over soup and bread. And so uh, come on out for that Saturday the 2nd at um, 4 p.m., and we'll just have a great time together. And then just one more announcement, and that is don't forget next Saturday night before you go to bed to, uh, to turn your clocks back, right? Fall back so that uh, you'll be all set and on time for church on Sunday, next Sunday. God bless you. And uh, we again want you to know that we love you and have a wonderful day. Please stand for the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Time 
children are dismissed at this time for Children's Church. And our altar is open for a time of prayer. You can make your way forward as we sing this song. Father, still our hearts before you this morning. We are grateful for the privilege of being in a place where we can have this sweet fellowship with one another and also and above all with you. Thank you for bringing us to the house of prayer. You are awesome, you are great, you are powerful, and we are here just to acknowledge your presence and your work in us and among us. We bring every person to you, everyone here in this sanctuary and the multitude of people that we all represent, our family members, our neighbors, our friends, Everyone that needs Jesus, we bring to you this morning. Father, we also are aware of some who are mourning the loss of a loved one. You know who they are. We just bring them up to you, praying that they may receive the comfort, the comfort that only from God can come. We pray that the Holy Spirit may be near and present, and your presence may be undeniable in their midst and in their hearts as they say their last farewell to that loved one. Lord, we are also aware that this nation is in great need for your help. And as we approach the election day, I pray, dear Lord, that you may give each one of us wisdom as we cast our vote. And we know 
that no one will make it there to the place of the highest responsibility in this country without your approval. So help us not to panic because you are still in control of everything. You are still on your throne. You are still the God Almighty. And we are not trusting in chariots. We are not trusting in man's power. We are trusting in our Almighty God. And Father, we pray that even today, here in this sanctuary and everywhere, where you'll be announced, your word will be announced, the gospel of salvation will be announced, we pray that you may be there to anoint, to bless, to encourage, to change, and to bring victory to, to every heart. Lord, we bring our pastor and his family to you this morning. We pray that you may be with them, you may encourage them, you may empower them, Lord Jesus, to fulfill the call you placed on their lives. Be with them this morning and uh, guide them and encourage them as well. We pray for all the churches around here. We pray for our New England district, Lord Jesus, that your name may be glorified and we may see a new day in our district. We may see and hear of great things done in, the, in God's name. Be with those who are ill, those who are in the hospitals. Several of our own Christian family, church family, are not doing well. We pray for your healing touch. We pray, dear Lord, for the widows of our congregation that you may be with them, encourage them, supply all their needs in glory. We remember the orphans of our congregation and the needy as far as material things are concerned. And we pray, dear Lord, that we may see your heavens open above us and your glory shining in each life and among your people. Be with everyone here around this altar with a specific need or not. Everyone in this sanctuary with a great need or not. We all need you. And we pray that your name may be glorified. Accept our praise and thanksgiving and help us, dear Lord, to see your presence among us and feel that you are here. We love you. We want to lo love you more and serve you better. Send your power over us. We pray in the powerful name of Jesus, remembering those who have no peace, those who are in the midst of war. We pray for your persecuted church, Lord Jesus. Oh Lord, and we pray that you may bring all these wars to an end that innocent people may be spared. Accept our praise once again in the name of Jesus. Amen. There is a piece of paper out there in the foyer where you can sign your name for uh, your contribution for Thanksgiving dinner, I believe. So please, before you leave the sanctuary, short stop there to write down your name with uh, your contribution for our Thanksgiving celebration. We'd like to welcome all of you. It's good to have all of you here. And uh, I'll say that Sylvia is with us. Sylvia, or is she somewhere? Oh, good to see you with us this morning. And uh, we would like also to extend our congratulations, our happy birthday to a few people in our congregation, Manuel and Nish. It was a great coincidence, but they were born the same day, huh? Same. <laughs> so, uh, Manuel and Nish, congratulations, happy birthday. And also our uh, sister Eunice Faria, has a special day today, has for celebration. God bless you all, and we are happy that you came to join us this morning. <clears throat> um, if you are able, I'm sure you are able, to open your Bibles 
In the book of John, chapter 1, 43 through 51. In reverence to the word of God, we usually stand up. Those who are able to stand up, if you are able, please stand up with me in our reverence to the word of God. John chapter 1, verse 43 through 50. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip and Andrew and Peter was from the town of Bethsaida. I should say, Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathaniel asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathaniel approaching, he said of him, here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. How do you know me? Nathaniel, Nathaniel asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathaniel declared, Rabbi, Rabbi you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You shall see greater things than that. He then added, I tell you the truth. You shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Now this morning we will be, for a few minutes, considering this great statement of our Lord Jesus Christ. You shall see greater things. Father, we pray that you may open our minds and our hearts. I am very needy this morning, I pray for your help, your anointing, and your grace. Bless your word for your glory and our edification. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. <clears throat> Somebody was boasting about his work experience and he had been in that job for 20 years and uh, said, well, I have 20 years of experience. And somebody else near him who knew him all those years said, that's not true. You only had one year of experience repeated 20 times. What they meant is, you didn't move a, a ninja after that first year. You didn't grow. And we all hope that nobody would say that of us when we say, you, I have 20 years, 30 years, 40 years of Christian experience. We hope that no one would say, no, it was just one year. We, you have repeated 30 or 40 years. Why? Because God expects us to grow in grace, in faith, in everything possible, as the Bible says. Today we will talk about greater things to be seen. Our text says, you shall see greater things. You shall see greater things. The Living Bible puts it this way. 
you will see greater proofs. Nathaniel was impressed when Jesus told him uh, that he had seen him under the fig tree. Uh, it was far away, and uh, he was impressed. How, could, how in the world could you see me being this far, this far away? Jesus told him, I saw you. I know you. I know your character. I know your heart. I know your mind. I know who, kind, who you are as a person. He was amazed. And Jesus told him, that Nathaniel declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. So he believed. He didn't believe Philip, but he believed when Jesus told him, I saw you. I saw you. Here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. I saw you, and I know you. And Jesus told him, you are impressed with my knowledge of you, but let me tell you, you shall see greater things than this. Years ago, I heard a Portuguese writer saying that the day I finish writing a new book is a very sad day for me. And he explained, because the excitement is gone, the anticipation is gone, the rush to come home and add another sentence is gone, nothing to look, to look forward to. Nathaniel was overwhelmed by Jesus' comment, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. He was astonished just by having a glimpse of Jesus as, the God, as God omnipotent. God who knows everything about everybody. God who sees everything inside someone, inside all of us, even at the distance. He probably was more astonished when Jesus told him, you will see greater things. What greater things? My friends, there is a verse in the scripture that we like, we like to quote, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We like that verse. But this morning I'm thinking, have we seen anything else happening in our lives since the day we accepted the Lord as our Lord as our Savior? Are we still relying on our experience of conversion? Aren't we seeing great things for God even in our days? What can be greater than knowing what is happening? in our heart, in other places or elsewhere, what can be greater than the God of grace, than the grace of God manifesting in our lives? It was in the beginning of Jesus' ministry, so they had not seen much yet. They didn't know him. They had not seen uh, miracles or anything big. And Jesus told Nathaniel, greater things you will see from now on. And the first great thing, or greater thing Nathaniel was about to see was uh, the power of God in his own life. From that day on, he wasn't the same person. The same way we know that when we come to Christ and we are really saved, we are not the same person from that day on. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, we read, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Great thing to, to show to the world. You are going to be, Jesus told him, you are going to be a new creation. You will be born again. In other words, your sins will be forgiven. Every your and you, even your own spirit will be affirming you that God is abiding in you. You not only will be an honest man, but you will also have the power in your life to overcome sin. 
Have we noticed that change in our own life? We must be born again, the Bible says. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. And this was the first great thing that Nathaniel had to know, had to realize, had to see a change in his own life. The, most, the more important thing for him wasn't just to belong to the membership of a church. And that's not the most important thing for us as well. The most important thing is for us to be born again because if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. You not only will be an honest man, but you'll see, you'll have power to overcome sin. Yes, you will see greater things than what you have seen today. The second thing that uh, Nathaniel would see, would, would notice, would know, would be God's power in other people around him. I am sure that uh, as we read in, uh, in Luke 19, 1 through 10, uh, if he knew Zacchaeus, he will know what happened to that man. The Bible reminds us that Zacchaeus uh, wanted to see Jesus. And when he saw him without any question, any prompt, uh, the Bible tells us that Zacchaeus stood up and said to the, to, to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and I will have, if I have cheated anyone out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Nobody told him that he should do those things, but because he came in contact with Jesus Christ and he was forgiven, he was changed, he was transformed, he volunteered to do the right thing. And I am sure that uh, Nathaniel uh, heard about this man. It was wonderful. Or Maybe he heard about that uh, Samaritan woman uh, that uh, found Christ and, and could go to the city and tell people, come and see the one I met. Isn't he the, the Messiah? And the Bible says that people came and they saw Jesus and they, they could say, it's not because you told us that he's the Messiah, but we have seen, we have believed, we have experienced this great thing in our lives as well. The third great thing that Nathaniel would see would be God's power, not only uh, on, on, on in himself or in other people, but God's power uh, uh, over all, the, all kind of diseases. We read in the scripture in Mark 1, 32 to 34, that lepers would come and be healed, blind would come and be healed. Uh, everybody with a disease would come and find the power of God in their lives. The Bible tells us that evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. So, greater things Nathaniel was witnessing in his Christian life. Uh, like Andrew and Philip and Peter and Matthew, Mark, John, James, new people. People who were transformed and changed. Traitors became faithful. Proud people become, becoming meek. Doubting ones becoming believers. God was working. And Jesus told him, you know, because I told, who, I told you that I saw you and who you are, that's not even the great, greater things you'll see. And this is what God has promised to all of us as well. Power over disease, power over sins, power over everything else. 
The Bible tells us here after sunset, people brought to Jesus all sick and demon possessed, and the whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many of them. Now, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. Is that true? And today and in the future? Are we serving the same Jesus of Hebrews 13, 8? The same yesterday, today, and forever? Matthew wrote, Jesus went through the Galilee, Galilee, teaching in synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. And in this list, we could include those who were born deaf and dumb and everyone who needed healing. You will see greater things than you saw today, Nathaniel. Another thing that uh, Nathaniel saw, he saw the power of God over nature. The Bible tells us about Jesus telling the storm, stop, be still. How marvelous, how wonderful is that? Yes, you will see greater things happening if you believe in me. Jesus with power over sin, over diseases, over nature, because he's the one who could steal the oceans and bring calmness and peace to those people around him. But there was something else that Nathaniel would see among the old, the greater things. You'll see God's power. He saw God's power even over death. There was the case of a dead girl who came back to life. It happened like this. A ruler came and knelt before him, before Jesus, and said, My daughter has just died, but come and put your hand on her, and she will live. Jesus got up and went with him. When Jesus entered the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the noisy crowd, he said, Go away. The girl is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took the girl by the hand, and she got up. News of this spread throughout all that region. My friends, this is the Jesus of Hebrews 13.8. 13, Yesterday, today, and tomorrow, show his power over sin in our lives, over sin among those who believe in him, show his power uh, over the diseases. He still can heal us. Show his power over nature and even over death. He proved that on the day of resurrection, when he, res when he came from the dead. And he said that we also will experience life again, even because those who believe in me, though they die, they will live again. Nathaniel was saw, or he saw or heard about what happened to Lazarus as well. But the Lord, by this time, there, when uh, Jesus said, let's go to the, to, the, to the cemetery, let's go and see what's happening, Mary said, but Lord, by this time there is a dead order, for he has been there for four days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? The glory of God. Praise God, today we might be crying the loss of our loved ones. But Jesus said, those who believe in me, though they die, they will live again. And this is our hope, that he has power even over death. Not only over the sin in our life, the sin among us, the power over the nature, or over nature, or power uh, in any kind that we can imagine, but even over death, and the day will come when the dead will come from the tombs, and God will restore them 
and wipe away all the tears. The most remarkable of all greater things took place that day I mentioned a few minutes ago. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb where Jesus' body had been placed and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. She came running to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one Jesus loved, and said, there have, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they put him. We know. You know the story of that great day, the resurrection day. My question for myself today and for you, my friend, have we seen something greater than that that happened the day we came to church and we accepted the Lord? Have we noticed something greater than the ordinary things that happen in our daily life? Are we satisfied just with the ordinary things in our life? Jesus told Nathanael, greater things you will see. There are greater things for all of us today. Did I not tell you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? Will we believe God and pray for a real time, year of revival in our midst, in our heart? Can we trust God to do something greater than what has happened in our life? We know that we are headed to the end times, and the Bible says the iniquity will increase and uh, the love of many will decrease. And men will turn away from Jesus Christ. But we also have the promise that he will send his Holy Spirit over everyone. And today, do we believe that God can do a greater things in us? Do we believe that God can do greater things that we have seen since we came to Jesus Christ? Do we believe that? I read something last week that brought tears to my eyes. Someone wrote, today's Christianity has been watered down in such a way that if it was poison, it would not kill anyone. And if it was medicine, it would not cure anyone either. And I thought about what Jesus told Nathaniel, you will see greater things, greater power. And I thought, do I have anything new and great to report today that I can credit to the power of God in my life? Can any of us, any of us say something like that? God did a mighty, great things among us. God is doing a great thing among us. And uh, I, Brother Jim didn't know what my message would be, but we sang how great uh, is our God. And this is the God that told Nathaniel, if you believe, you'll keep seeing greater things. Are we seeing any, anything in our lives, in our church, in our community, that we can say, this is a great thing God is doing? Can we testify today that God is doing great work among us in our lives? Today's Christianity has been watered down in such a way that if it was poison, it would not kill anyone. This is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that the gospel is the power of God for salvation of anyone who believes. So, the day of great things are gone. We cannot expect anything 
greater than what is happening right now? As we look into our own life, can we say this is all God can do? Greater things you'll see. And I, uh, may God help us. I, I pray and I ask you to pray as well. Let's pray to God to prove that person wrong. Christianity is business as usual. Has been watered down in such a way that we are just going through the motion, through our routines, that if it was poison, it would not kill anyone. If it was the medicine, it would not cure anyone. May God help us. Do we still believe that God can do great things in our midst? Do we believe that? I remember the hymn that I heard many, many years ago that goes like this. My father is omnipotent. He's the one who can do greater things. And that you can deny. A God of might and miracles. It is written in the sky. Though here his glory has been shown, we still can't fully see the wonders of his might, his throne. It will take eternity. The Bible tells us of his power and wisdom, and all the way through, and every little bird and flower are testimonies too. It took a miracle to put the stars in place. It took a miracle to hang the world in space. But when he saved my soul, cleansed and made me whole, it took a miracle of love and grace. Greater things you will see. Do we have faith this morning to believe that God can do greater things in our lives? You know, we need to start at the altar. And today, unless you are very happy with the great things God is doing in life, there is place for growth. We are not here to repeat one year of experience 50 times. We are here to believe that God is still almighty, that God can still save and sanctify and keep and empower. Yes, it took a miracle to put the stars in place. It took a miracle to hang the world in space. But when he saved my soul and cleansed and made me whole, it took a miracle of love and grace. Would you please stand with me? And let me tell you that I still believe that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today. He also can perform greater things in our life. Are you happy? with your Christian life? Can you testify, testify today and say, well, God did a mighty thing in my life this week or next, past, last week or a month ago? Is God, do you believe that God still can do great things? Do you believe that God can still forgive sins and change lives? Or we just need to keep going and having our life and our church services and everything else. We need a revival, my people. We need to see greater things. As Jesus told Nathaniel, Jesus is telling us today, you shall see greater things. If we believe, if we obey, if we seek God, we can see greater things. And the altar of God is right here open. If you want to come to Jesus this morning and tell him, Lord, I have not seen anything new in my life for quite some time. I have not seen anything big in my life. 
Nothing has happened in my life. I don't have anything. As in the past, we used to, to testify every week what God was doing in our lives. Is God doing something in our lives that we can testify about? Would you come to God this morning and say, Lord, I know that you have much more for me than what I have right now. I know that you can make me a better person, a different Christian, a better Christian. I believe that there are greater things that must happen in my own life. The altar is open. If you want to come, come to Jesus this morning, you know, greater things are still possible. Great things are still available to each one of us, to God's church. Let's pray. And this morning, it's my prayer that as we go home, we may go different because God the Holy Spirit did something in our lives. Father, we want to thank you for your word. We want to thank you because you did a marvelous job in our hearts the day you forgave our sins. We thank you for that miracle of love and grace that it's still available to everyone. And we pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit may convince us of what great things you have for each one of us. Bless your people and bless your church and bless each one of us. And help us, dear Lord, to see your power displayed in our lives because greater things are still available. Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You have all the power, we pray, and protect us from watering down your, your gospel, the power of God for salvation. Help us, Lord, to represent you well in our world today, in our church, in our community. Help us to see something big, something great, something powerful happening in us and happening among us. We pray in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Keep believing that God still can do greater things than what we have seen so far. God bless you.